Midnight Moon Written by Susanna Thompson Narrated by Sarah Sampino Chapter 16 Damien stopped by my house the next morning as I was about to leave for school. Their spell worked, he said in amazement. I was just there, and she's still a wolf. That's a relief, I said, and opened my car door. Thanks for letting me know. So, uh, do you want to go to dinner after school? Damien asked quickly. Just, um, somewhere casual to catch up. Your girlfriend just disappeared, I reminded him. You should probably pretend to care. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, I should, but, um, maybe we could talk later? On the phone. Maybe, I answered indifferently. I know you were upset, he began. I have to get to school, I told him. Could you please move your car? He looked hurt by my abrupt dismissal. Yeah, sure, but... He trailed off as I turned away from him and sat down in my car. Bye, I said, before shutting the door and firing up the engine. I watched him in my rearview mirror as he walked slowly toward his car and got in. He sat looking in my direction for a moment, before backing out of my driveway and driving off down the street. I took an alternate route to school so that I wouldn't have to follow him. It seemed that he expected things to just go back to how they were before he did his fake dating thing with Kristen. In his favor, she had confirmed that they hadn't had sex, but the other things she'd said were burned in my mind. When I got to school, I found out that people already knew about Kristen's disappearance. Her parents had contacted the police last night when she failed to come home after the stores closed. Fortunately for Damien, she had told her parents that she was going Christmas shopping. That was probably because she knew he wouldn't cover for her if she had said she was on a date with him when I was murdered. The Amber Alert for Kristen had been broadcast late last night, and the students who heard about it told their friends when they arrived at school. The news spread like wildfire through our class, and I saw people giving Damien speculative looks in the hall. He's bad luck, I heard a girl say in the restroom. No, her friend argued. He's having bad luck. It's like my Uncle Stephen. His first wife died of cancer, and his second wife got killed in an accident. Like I said, the first girl stated. He's bad luck. Such a shame, too, because he's so hot. I forget my name when he looks at me with those eyes. And that body, it's almost worth dying for. Kristen probably went out with a smile on her face, thinking about him. We don't know if she's dead, her friend protested. Her car is missing, too, so she might have run away. The police were baffled by the discovery of Kristen's car in the metro parks. They speculated that she might have been lured there by her abductor but they had no leads as to who that might be. We were worried about them finding Taylor's phone among Kristen's possessions, but she must have tossed it after it was no longer useful to her. Damien was the only one questioned about Kristen, since he was her boyfriend. He proclaimed ignorance of her whereabouts and told them that she hadn't responded to his text messages at all on Sunday, and he voluntarily allowed them to check his phone. That was something that Bryce's mom had told him to do. She had destroyed Kristen's phone so it couldn't be traced, and had instructed Damien to delete all the texts on his phone, and then send a few to Kristen for appearance's sake. Mrs. Mitchell and her group had left for Wyoming with Kristen shortly after Damien had seen them early Monday morning. Bryce kept us informed of the situation, but they had no fear of discovery since they were traveling with a wolf instead of a human girl. Nobody would ever suspect it was Kristen. She would end up being a picture on a missing poster, since there would never be a human corpse to be found. Damien didn't attempt to call me that evening, but Taylor assured me it was because Bryce had given him the message from his mom that he should only have contact with his male friends for a couple of weeks, until suspicions about him died down. The police couldn't do anything anyway. Whatever they might suspect, they had no evidence without a body. We're not together anyway, I told her. So that's it? Taylor questioned. You're not going to see him anymore. You said it yourself, 
I reminded her. He was kissing Kristen, and that's not okay. I know, but... I smiled humorlessly at her lack of an argument. There is no but. Anyway, now that it's over, we can all go back to normal life. Yeah, she agreed unconvincingly, looking pensive as she gazed away from me. Normal life. They can't really have that, Damien and... Bryce. Oh, but Daphne. She brightened when she mentioned her name. She was back at school today, and she said she feels great. Yeah, I said, smiling for real this time. I saw her. That's the one good thing to come out of all of this. Why do you think she did it? Taylor asked. Why'd she save Daphne? She liked her, I replied. That's what she told me at the pond. She talked to you? Taylor questioned in surprise. You didn't tell me that. I thought she just tricked you into going there and attacked you. I shifted uncomfortably in my seat beside Taylor on my comfortable couch. No, uh, we talked about Daphne first. Her eyes fixed on me with suspicious speculation. Just about Daphne? Or did she mention Damien too? I bet she did, she went on without waiting for my answer. What did she say? Did she tell you that she had sex with him because I bet she was lying? No, she actually said that he wouldn't have sex with her, I explained. That's great, Taylor exclaimed. I told you that you had nothing to worry about. What about, um, what about you and Bryce? You said that things were on hold until the Kristen problem was solved. Are you going to go out with him now that she's taken care of? Her gaze sharpened as she studied me. Why are you changing the subject? What else did Kristen say about Damien? Why don't you want to talk about him? Why don't you want to talk about Bryce? I countered. You're freaked out by the werewolf thing, huh? It's different now that you've seen it happen. I guess, she admitted. I mean, my boy, she abruptly cut off in the middle of her sentence. Uh, dating someone that turns into a wolf on a regular basis is kind of... Weird? I supplied. It's not his fault, she continued. He doesn't have any choice in it, but... But you do. I finished with a dawning realization. That's what this is about. You don't want to be a werewolf. He hasn't asked me to, she said. But what about the future? If we were to stay together, then what would he want? He turned Kristen because he was in love with her. And not that we're in love she hurried to assure me. But you could be, I said. He's someone you could fall in love with. You like him a lot, and he likes you. That doesn't change anything, she stated with a sigh. It's better not to start anything if it's not going to work out. You should talk to him, I urged. Tell him your concerns and see what he says. That's good advice, she noted with a meaningful look at me. You should tell Damien what's bugging you. It's not the werewolf thing, though, she decided. You didn't seem freaked by that at all. I shrugged. I guess I've had more time to get used to it. I was with him for the last full moon. She regarded me curiously. But you're okay with that part of it. You have no problem with him being a werewolf. I hadn't thought about it one way or the other, but now I considered her observation. It was true that I had accepted it rather quickly. I guess it's not that big of a deal to me, I concluded. It only happens once a month. Not that big of a deal? She repeated in amazement. If you can get over him being a werewolf, don't you think you guys can get past him kissing Kristen? Make him apologize and everything first, she suggested. But give him another chance. I'll think about it. I promised her, just so she'd leave me alone about it. My mind was made up, though, that I didn't want to become entangled with him again. I was taking this opportunity to make a clean break and leave behind all the madness he'd brought into my life. My reprieve from all of it lasted less than a week, however. A loud pounding on my front door disturbed my peace that Friday evening. I peeked out and saw that it was Damien. Why did my parents always leave me home alone on weekend evenings? I wondered resentfully. How many date nights did they need? The insistent knocking had finally stopped, 
and I turned to walk away without answering the door. Let me in, he demanded. I know you're there. I can hear you breathing, and I can smell you. Or what? I asked derisively. You'll huff and you'll puff and you'll blow my house down? Kristen said you're a lot stronger than a normal human. Please, Clarissa, he pleaded. I need you. I threw open the door then, ready to go off on him that I wasn't here for his use. But I stopped short when I saw his anguished expression. What happened? I gasped. They wanted me to help them, he told me in a broken voice. Her mom was begging me to tell her where Kristen is, and all I could say was that I didn't know. I couldn't help them, he cried. Responding to his pain, I embraced him in an effort to comfort him. He held on to me tightly with what I now suspected was not his full strength. I wondered how much longer he could hold back, in more ways than one. I remember Kristen saying that he had reined it in for me, but that side of him was still there. It would come out eventually, and that was the part I wasn't prepared to deal with. Not tonight, though. He was too upset for this to be anything more than a warm hug. So I just stood there in his arms and held on to him for as long as I could.